Hey, good morning and welcome to Breakthrough Walls. I'm Ken Walls and I'm your host and I am fired up this morning to have my good buddy Frank Crenitti on the show. We're going to talk about some really powerful stuff today. Frank, Frank's going to lay down some gold. I think it will change some lives. Frank, did you share this out on Facebook, bro? We are shared out on my page, my man, my friend. I'm going to share Dude, this. Welcome. Too. Hey, what's up? How's welcome everybody doing? Show. Oh, very happy to be on the show. I feel like I'm going to show it you every single night, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do talk every night, don't we? It's quite, quite. Yeah. Different. So, so, um, so, dude, we um, we decided kind of at last minute, I think a couple days ago, to to do this. Um, you were on the show before, and you went through your life story. I think a lot of people know your life story, but why don't you tell a little bit about that so people know your your uh, your backstory? And by the way, I, before we get started, share this out. Thank you to everyone who mm -hmm. shared this out because Frank's going to spit some gold. I guarantee it. I might even spit a couple of silver nuggets. <laughs> I got some platinum nuggets for you. Forget about the gold. We're going to skip oh, right through that. We're going platinum today, baby. Platinum. 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 So, so tell everybody where you're from and and how you got started. Oh, well, how far do you actually want me to go back? I mean, you know, from birth when I came out and you know ready to go, or uh, I mean, you know, where where am I from? Um, I'm from Delaware County, Pennsylvania, where I'm still at. Uh, you know, Delco, as everybody sees. You know, Delco. Uh, here we call it Delco, Delaware County. Uh, born and raised here my whole life. Love where I'm at. Would rather be nowhere else, but right here, right now. And uh, you know, I'm at Piazza Honda. I've uh, been working, uh, been working for the for the with the Piazzas uh, for uh, almost 20 glorious years now. So it's uh, wow. You know, it's been uh, it's been great, man. It's been great. You know. So you, um, I mean, you sell cars. You're, you're, you're one of those guys. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't actually sell cars. No, I love I that actually, answer, dude. I love whenever <laughs> I say that. You... <laughs> People say, what do you do? And I say, how much time do you actually have for me to sit here and, and explain to you everything that, that I do in life, you know? So, um, no, I, I do not sell cars. I, 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 figure out what uh, challenges that uh, I have to overcome every day with people and try to help them through their process, solve their problems and put them in the right situation is really what it is. And then, you know, keep building relationships. Um, you know, what I do is I, I work for the people. So people say, oh, you work for the Piazzas. No, I'm partners with the Piazzas. You know, the Piazzas I, I treat as, as my partners in business. Um, you know, they pay for all the overhead, supply all the inventory. Let me work in this, uh, this glorious, beautiful building here. And uh, I work for the people, you know, so um, if you're actually working for the person um, whose name is on the sign out front, you're absolutely doing it wrong in whatever business that you're doing. The, the people that you work for are, are your clients, are your customers, are your friends, uh, are your relatives, are the people that are going to become your friends. They're the people um, that I actually work for. And so they're my employer, right? Everybody that comes in and sits down and, and, uh, you know, tells me what their problems, what their challenges, how I can help them. And I explain to them and walk them through the process. They're the people I work for. So, um, so you know, I actually don't work in the car business. I just, that that's the tangible product that, um, people end up driving out in at the end of the day, but, um, I work in the people business. So I, I, and, and, but I mean, you didn't, you didn't like come out of the womb selling cars, although a lot of people may think that that's what happened. Um, did you, I mean, before you got into the car business, did you have any struggles or has life always been easy? Oh yeah. When I walk around, there's just rainbows and unicorns everywhere in my life. It's crazy. I mean, like, it's like one of these, uh, one of these cartoon shows, you know, every time right. I, no, of course not. There's so there's so many struggles, you know, um, in life, um, you know, from when I was a kid all the way up to now, you know. So um, it's the old saying, life's not what happens to you. It's how you how you react to it, you know. So you have to be able to have to be able to battle through, you know, your own issues. And sometimes you got to put them aside to be able to, you know, be successful in business, be successful in life. And, you know, you got to deal with everything, you know, everything separate. So, uh 
just because you see on Facebook what everybody, you know, what you want everybody to see, and this is everybody, that doesn't mean that that's the, that's the way life always is or life always has been. But at right. the same point, you got to stay positive, right? So, you know, positivity helps, helps everything. It doesn't matter what happens to you in your life. It's only a momentary thing. You got to battle through it. You got to positively push through it. You know, I tell everybody, if you want to change your life, just be the most positively annoyingly positive person that that is in the room every single day like you know negativity will just will just will just go away from you like negative people you know people walk into the dealership and they're like hey how you doing i'm like man another great day just when i think it can't get any better it does and they're like oh i'm like how's your day they're like well it's okay well i don't want to deal with people that hey your life's just okay you know because um that'll bring you down yep that's true, man. So, so you, you, um, prior to car sales, did you sell anything else? Oh man, I sold energy. So energy was, um, I worked for a company called NRG, which is a marketing firm for Green Mountain Energy. And this, this is where I learned how to get, uh, a lot of referrals, um, because it was basically almost door to door sales. You know, you start with your own, uh, you start with your own customer base and then, you know, you, you have to, you have to ask for it. Uh, you know, referrals. So if you're not asking for referrals, uh, you, you're never going to grow your business, you know. So to me, at a very young age, you know, 18 years old, I learned how to win with multiplication. So if you're trying to win by addition, meaning you're trying to do, um, you know, one particular transaction and be very successful with that one particular transaction and then move on to the next transaction, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, a relationship transaction, a business transaction, whatever it is, you're never going to be able to scale whatever you're trying to do by addition. You have to scale by multiplication. So the, the way I scale by multiplication is referrals, social proof. You'll see, you know, you come in, you buy a car, Boom, we're taking your picture. We're tagging you. Um, we're going to have fun. It's fun for you. It's also fun for me. I get to, you know, meet new people, um, get to go to, you know, get to uh, interact with people in, in, uh, in that particular um, person circle that I would have never had access to before, you know, and then we start to form an online relationship. Um, I get referrals that way. I get referrals from people that never even purchased a car, never met me, um, don't know who I am besides just on Facebook, but they see all the positive experiences that uh, all my clients and friends have here at the dealership and they refer me over customers. So that's how I know that I'm dominating the space and winning with multiplication rather than just trying to sell a car trying to help a customer. Right. So the only way I, you're going to win multiplication. I, I mean, and since we're just going to talk about car sales and not your life, <laughs> I'm kidding. We could talk about anything. No, I, I'm, I kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So you know like, that. you know, I've had the, the privilege, uh, I mean, you and I, uh, like I, I, <laughs> I said to you the other day, I said, Dude, I think you might be in the top maybe three of my best friends in the world. And you're like, what? Why am I not number one? <laughs> yeah, man. I want to be everybody's number one. I want I know, everybody right? to be my best friend. That's my goal. <laughs> right. So, so you know, I, 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 um, I have had the privilege of, of sitting in the dealership. Ray Higdon just said, we're legends. Wow. That's yeah. coming from <laughs> the legend. So, I love Ray. Listen, and, and here, here's the here's the great thing, right? So, you know, people, the, you know, they say, well, man, you got it all figured out. I don't have it all figured out. So, you know, am I coaching people now? Absolutely. To do, you know, to grow their levels. But you know what? I'm not saying that I got it all figured out. I'm listening to other coaches and it's not coaches that are necessarily and probably actually not really in the car business, right? I pay for your course, you know, the, the, yeah. the wow formula, right. I listen to the wow formula, you yeah. know, you got the, your, your, uh, your, your closed group that you do. Right. So I pay yeah. for that, even though you're my friend, yeah. I don't care. I don't ask for a discount. Right. I you still don't. pay you for, for your information. Your information is worth a lot of money to me, you know, a lot of money to you. So I never ask my friends to discount their services so that I can learn from them to me that you're not my friend. If you ask me to discount my service, you know, um, and, and you're not willing to pay for the knowledge that I've acquired. You know what I mean? You're, you're just a leech. You want to leech off me. I'm, I'm not a leech. So, um, but bring back to my point, dude, that, 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 hold it. I, can I, you have to reiterate that. Like people need to get that. I, I, cause that honestly, that 
don't you hate? I mean, you get that, right? People call you and say, "Hey, I man, mean, I don't, I don't go into my, I don't go into my friend's restaurant, or you know, go to my, go to a, uh, you know, to my guy up at Nordstrom's, or go to my TV guy, because they're going to discount their product, their service, you know, and their time to me. I, I go there because they're important to me, and I'm important to them, and you know, they're going to show me the respect that they're going to give me the information that I'm looking for without all the BS. Yep. And, you know, give me the right information and the knowledge that they have that I'm seeking. Right. So why would I ask them just because we have a relationship to discount themselves? Right. So people say, oh, well, you're making you know good money. So you can you don't have to ask people for discounts. No, it's not. That has nothing to do with it. Right. I respect their time. I respect their intelligence yep. uh, enough to know that I, I don't need a discount you know, to go to them. I need their knowledge that they have so that I can grow myself or find out the information I'm looking for to bring me back to Ray Hignan. Listen, I've never been in network marketing. I've never done MLM. I mean, maybe back in the day, I think I tried one thing, you know, it never just wasn't my thing because I didn't know how to do it. You know, probably if I had Ray Higdon in my life um, back then, I might be one of the greatest network marketers in network marketing history, but I signed up for his course. I paid for a year in advance because I want to learn what other industries are doing, what other, um, you know, gurus and teachers, you know, are doing people that have actually succeeded in these other industries, you know, at the top of their food chain, which Ray is right. He's yeah. a dominant force in, in, in coaching now and was in, in, in MLM. Um, so I signed up. For, I mean, I probably spend, you know, $10,000 plus a year just on all these online coaching that have nothing to do with car, car sales or real estate, the two things that, that I'm into, we're coaching, right? I just yeah. want to, I want to learn how other industries are approaching things so that I'm ready for the next, um, the next curve, right? So um, comfortability, being comfortable is the, the, to me, one of the worst words in the English language. Like it just, it freaks me out being comfortable, right? So I never want to be comfortable. So if I just sit on this, this mountaintop and say, man, you know, I'm selling a hundred cars a month, or, you know, I got this going on or that going on. And I don't try to grow a as a as a person, as a human being, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, and getting my intellect up in other areas. Then I, I am just trying to be comfortable. I'm complacent, right? So yeah. um, I I pay for Ray's course. I pay for your course. I have like probably five other courses yep. that I pay for. And it's funny the the ones that you know are only like you know twenty dollars a month or something like that. They give me some value, but the ones that I really pay attention to. Or the ones that I pay big time for, you know, the the five hundred dollar a month ones, the yeah. you know some of these ones where you write a big check to go to, I get a lot more out of it. So, and I never ask any of these people just because they're my friends, or um, you know, just because I have a relationship with them, or we talk, you know, on a daily or weekly basis to discount their services. I don't even, I don't even ponder. And if somebody tries to give me a discount, I just listen. I, 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 I almost wouldn't want that. You know what I mean? I don't want you to discount your time. Um, so, you know, that's, that's what I do. I, you know, I try to grow. So, um, Ray, I appreciate everything you do. You know, I, I listen to his stuff uh, daily as much as I possibly can. He's, he's great at what he does. Uh, so he any is, of my friends, if any of my friends are in network marketing, I know they are. If you're not following Ray Higdon, um, or you're not, uh, sign up for his group, which is only, and I can't believe it's only like 20 or 30 bucks a month. I think it's it is. It's, it's 20. It's, it's twenty right. bucks, and then your group too is only like twenty or thirty bucks a month. I think yeah. it is. It's like 25. it's crazy with the amount of knowledge yeah. that you discount yourself. You know, I'd raise that yeah. price right up right now. I know you, you know? would. I, I know. <laughs> hey, Ray, I think uh, I think Frank wants us to raise our prices. I would pay more. I'm telling Dude, you, for, Ray, what, Ray for, what, has... for, what, for what you give me, for what I get, yeah, I would pay a lot more. Well, Ray, you know, Ray's got. Um, his rank makers. Yeah. Rankmakers.com. And it's, he's got, dude, he's got 20 or 15,000 people in that group. That's it's crazy. Awesome. crazy. So, you know, I'll, I'll get there someday right now. We're, we're hovering around 50 in my group, but yep. just started it not long ago. But anyway, that that's not what this is about. This is about like, you know, people. So people are um, struggling. And and in car sales, in every industry in the world, you already know this. There are people at the top of their game. I mean, dude, you've sold what? It's got to be close to fourteen thousand cars now, and up. Wow. Yeah, but who's counting? Who's counting? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, and so so that that's crazy. Those are crazy numbers. And I, I was those, actually those numbers, talking, are, those numbers, those numbers, yeah, but those numbers are crazy to you. They're they're not actually crazy to I, me. I um, get that, but I, I was talking to our our buddy Shaka Dyson the other night. And love and, Shaka. And champion. I, champion. I love that dude. So, yeah. so, you know, Shaka, wow, my camera just did that blurred out thing. Um, Shaka said, dude, you don't even understand that, that what, what it, he goes, I've been on the floor. I've sold cars. He said, you know, 15, 17, 20 a month, you get up to 30, man. And you got respect in the dealership, like real respect. He goes, over a hundred a month, like you did like 128 last month or something crazy, right? So like I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk about last month. I don't I, care, right? You start, <laughs> if you look back and you want to talk about everything that you did in the past and I, every I one of your every one of your stories is going to start with I used to, right? So when all your stories start with I used to, you got to move on. It's time to move on, right? So I I I, I always look what what am I doing now in the present and then where am I going in the near future in the distant future, you know, that's so that's right. really what you have to, you build on your successes, right. But you can't look back at them or, or you end up being that legend, right. Legend means old and already did. I, I'm, I'm yeah. still building on what we're doing here. Well, so, so, you know, my, my point is, is you're doing like Shaka said, dude, that's like, people don't do that in the car business. Like they don't, they don't do that. And he goes, well, people do do that. Well, you do, do. I know. That. And and I know there's, a, there's a couple other people that do incredibly well too, but I, I, I think that there's something, if you were to say, dude, this is the one thing that separates me from, from everyone else in this business. What is it? And persistence. Persistence. But there's a lot you of people that feel like they're being persistent, dude. Yeah, but they're they're being negatively persistent. They're negatively persistently telling themselves that they can't, they won't, they shouldn't, right? I positively every day tell myself that I'm going to, it's going to happen. This is the way that I'm going to do it. And I have a plan to actually accomplish my goals. So it's one thing to write down, I'm going to sell 100 cars a month, right? It's another thing to take enough action to actually um, get to 100 cars a month. And then it's another thing to be persistent enough to actually get there, right? To actually make the phone call, shake the hands, do the Facebook post, um, be out in the community every day, shaking hands, kissing babies, like you're running for office. You're looking for people's votes. You're not looking to sell any type of product right now. If you're a real estate agent, um, if you're a car salesman, if you're in MLM, if you're in any type of sales and just about everything in life almost anymore is sales, right? Yeah. You have yeah. to be persistent at it. You have to be out there. You have to be able to put yourself out there. If you, nobody knows who you are, then nobody's going to be able to purchase from you. Nobody's going to say, "Hey, go see Frank." Well, where's Frank? Oh, I don't. I don't actually know where Frank is. Well, then how are you going to go see him, right? So <laughs> people need to know where you are. They right. need to know who you who, know who you are. And the only way you do that is to get yourself out there. So not just social media, right? You can't just because if it was just social media, then everybody would just do you know social media posts and. Hey, Facebook, here I am. And, you know, this is what everybody does. Um, uh, uh, hey, just wanted to say what's up, Facebook. Um, you know, I got a big sale going on here today at uh, such and such uh, Chevy dealer and uh, come down and see me. And, uh, you know, we're going to make it uh, we're going to make it happen. Listen, that's not how right. this works. OK, right. it's not how this works. I mean, that's great that you're going to be able to do a Facebook live and put yourself out there. I tell everybody I coach do as many Facebook lives as you can. You'll get comfortable with it, right? But the, the true gold is when you start building relationships with enough people in your community, you know, that they know who you are. They trust who you are to, to, to send business your way. They, they will refer somebody over to you um, because they know that you're going to have that customer, that client who's going to end up being your friend in the long run. After you build a relationship with them, you have their best interest, right? The only reason I refer anybody over to see any insurance agent, any of my my real estate, uh, my real estate guys, you know, John Poor, Mike Mahalan, all the guys that work on their on their team. The only reason I refer anybody over to a restaurant or you know uh, any place that I use is because I know because I use these people. 
I know they're going to treat my clients the right way. I don't do it because they're going to send me, you know, uh, you know, a gift card or send me, you know, a referral fee. I mean, that's all fine and great. And, you know, I appreciate it. I don't need it. I, I appreciate that. You know, a lot of times I'll just, I'll donate it back or, you know, something like that. If there's a referral fee, you're just telling them not to worry about it. You just, uh, you know, give it to somebody that, uh, you know, give it to a charity or give it to my charity. Oh, it's over here. My charity, uh, you know, Delco group or something like that. So we can get back to the community. But the only reason you refer people is because people trust you, you know, enough that you're going to take care of, you know, their clients the same way that you took care of them. So, you know, that's, that's where the gold's at, not, you know, um, just showing up on Facebook every day. And the only way you do that is to get out and ask for people's vote, right? You're not asking for their sale. You're asking for, you're asking for their vote. So if you treat, you know, treat everything like you're a politician and not the negative way, but treat everything <laughs> in the positive as a politician, right? What are they doing? I mean, even presidential races, they're knocking on people's doors legitimately. Like they're actually yeah. going in the communities, not just for PR on social media. They're legitimately going around knocking on people's doors, right? A mayoral yep. race, they're definitely knocking on doors. And that's what you want to be. I say this all the time. You want to be the mayor in car sales, not the president. So I see a lot of salespeople and they just want to get popular, you know, on Facebook with all these, uh, and all these Facebook groups with all these other car salesmen or, you know, I look at their 5,000 friends and 3,264 of them are all people in the car business. You're doing it wrong. Those people, if they're, if your 5,000 friends are filled up with 3,000 people from across the country that could never buy from you, refer to you or anywhere in your ge geographic area, you're doing it wrong. You're wasting your 5,000 friends that Facebook allows you to have without having a business page or, you know, run ads. So um, that's how you're going to grow organically is to, you know, capture as many people that can purchase locally uh, right. from you, can refer geographically because, you know, a car is a, is a, ge it's a geographic product, right? You know, I'm not, you know, going to Ohio to, I know Ken Walls will come to Philly to see me, but I, I'm not going to go to Ohio. You, know, you, are, you already know my next car purchase is from you. <laughs> I got your Odyssey out front, man. All juice up, ready to go. <laughs> Why's it got to be a minivan? I'm just kidding. So, I, Great, greatest vehicle ever made. I know it really. It's an amazing vehicle. So, so, I, you know, I want to, I want to talk about the, um, it, because this is, you know, we talked about Ray Higdon. Um, and you know, you and I, again, you and I become incredibly good friends and talk every day. If a day goes by, we don't talk. I wonder what's wrong. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong? What happened, dude? But like, you know, I think that, that it's important because Ray Higdon started, as you know, he has wealth Wednesday, right? And right. literally like thousands of people all over the world are participating in that. And right. it's literally going, taking a $20 bill or a hundred dollar bill. Going Stuck to in the diapers store, or whatnot. Listen, I do, I, box. No, nobody can know that you did it. Nobody, right. they can't find that you did it. Right. So like you, one of the key elements that I've I've seen with every truly successful person, and dude, you're you're in the in the in the uh, well, I won't disclose your your financial status, but but you know, if if you're in car sales and you're not you're not approaching a million dollars a year, you should probably listen to this guy. So, um, but you know, like you're you went out and did something extraordinary. You and and John, I think John, right? We have eleven. We have eleven guys. Um, that, oh, uh, eleven that started. Eleven it. guys that started the uh, the Delco Group. And uh, so, talk about uh, the Delco Group and what it's about and what you guys do to to help the community. So, the Delco Group is eleven guys from Delco who um, we we formed this charity back in January um, because you know we've we've all been doing little charity things and you know giving back to the community and uh, uh, John Port and uh, Mike and and uh, the rest of us uh, you know we all wanted to give back more and you know January I think it was uh, 17th or 27th I forget the exact date you know we actually formed the Delco Group and now you know you fast forward uh, you know seven eight months later. And uh, I can't even begin to explain the support from the community that we're getting. You know, it's um, every dollar that we that we raise, you know, fundraise and um, stays right here in Delaware County. So it's all to give back just to the community. I mean, you know, back in the day, I would write checks to, you know, all these big organizations, you know, Red Cross or, you know, whatever it is, just because I felt like I needed to give back. 
but you know, I write a thousand dollar check and then it just goes away and I don't see where that money goes at all. And then, you know, I go onto their website and I see that they're, you know, their, their president makes, you know, 2.3 million and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we wanted to start a true nonprofit. Nobody here makes a dollar, right? It's costing me actually a ton of money, which is fine because it's all charity. I see where all my money's going. So I put my money where my mouth is. I, I support and sponsor just about every event um, that we put on so far. I write a check just like every other sponsor does because I want my money, not just my time, um, going into, you know, supporting the community. And, you know, our goal, which is um, to be, to help all the people that are in need in Delaware County and be 100% transparent. So everything we're doing um, is totally visible. You know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, we're putting everything out there on social media, A, so everybody can see what we're doing with the money that they're um, helping us raise for the community. And then, you know, B, it gives us social proof, you know, which actually will attract, you know, more money um, towards us, which means we can go out and help, you know, help more people. So if you go on the Delco Group's page, if you're not already a, uh, Sorry, I'm inverted here. If you don't already go to uh, uh, the Delco Group's page uh, on Facebook, the Delco Group, uh, like us. I'll uh, I'll send out invitations to just about everybody on the stream. Um, we're doing great in the community here. So you know, if you want to you want to help us, great. If you want to try to model what you're doing to help the community, I had a couple people this week reach out to me, and they're they're trying to do a similar um, charity model to what we're to what we're doing. You know, and I'm trying to just give them some some pointers uh, of how we're doing it and. It, it, it's it's it feels good it feels right you know so that's that's the way i do everything if it feels if it feels good and you know and, and we're getting positive responses which everything's been overwhelmingly yeah. um, positive and we can help people then then and that's what we're going to do and that's what we're doing so for the person though that is struggling to and and we'll we can stick with car sales or we can talk about life in general um, but for the person that's struggling that, you know, sees you doing charity work and they think, well, yeah, dude, look at you. You're doing a hundred plus cars a well, month. And listen, you got all this yeah, but I, I'm just, I'm just using my, you know, what you would call Facebook famous, right? right just, I, I get that. Just, just, just to rally the community, right? Because if it was just me. Yeah. Or it was just, you know, the, the 11 guys and, that we have, then we could never be we could never grow to be able to scale, to be able to help enough people, right? So right. our goal is to bring in the whole community and that's what we're doing, right? So these events that you see, like we threw a, you know, a beer pong tournament, we threw a, you know, a golf outing, uh, we threw, you know, we're, we're, we're raising money with, uh, with raffles and fundraisers, you know, that we have and everything. The only way we could be successful, the same way that I'm successful in business yeah. is to win by multiplication. So if it was just us 11, right, and we're just doing it, just just touching base with the, the power bases that we have, our families, our friends, at some point, it would just fizzle out. Just like if I was selling cars to just the people that I knew, right, right. just because, you know, it would fizzle out. So to us... Um, the same way that we grew our business, the same way that, you know, some of these guys in their, you know, uh, uh, in, in, in their businesses grew their businesses is we're reaching out to the community. So is the Delco group, you know, me and John Port and Mike Mahone and the Sopers and like all these guys, the 11, the, the 11 guys that, that form this sure, but it's, it's not, it's actually the community, right? Cause if we didn't have the community involved. We would never be able to the support. We would never be able to scale to where we actually want to be, what our goals are, right? So I'm not going to put, you know, our goals that we talk about um, in our meetings out there, you know, in the public, but we have some really big goals. We want to help a lot of people. And the only way we could do that is if we have the community support. It's the but same I, way I, in business. Right. It's I, the same I, way in business. But I, my here's here's my point, though. I, you know, you what, know, what your you're, you're a very, you're a very giving person. Um, mm -hmm. Ray Higdon, I heard Ray talk about this Wealth Wednesday. And since he, since he took on the, the idea of just going out on Wednesdays and give, 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 and, and, you know, being very charitable, like you're doing, like you, you, um, it's affected you positively in a lot of different ways. Just like Ray said, his business has like quadrupled since he started doing this charity stuff, right? 
Right. So for the person that 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 doesn't know how to put together a Delco group, for the person okay. that doesn't know they they're struggling to pay their rent or their mortgage or or whatever, like so just so just give back your time to something that you actually care about, right? It doesn't have to be you write the check. You know, I mean, years ago, could I could I write a check? I mean, I'm sure I could have. It would have hurt a lot, you know. Um, now I can write a check, you know, for for whatever it is that, that I want to sponsor. And my goal to be more successful is so that I can give back more, you know what I mean, to the community. So that's why I want to become more successful. You know, money is a byproduct of your success. It shouldn't be your driving force. You shouldn't be, you know, up the bat and thinking about what your next contract is. It should be to win the game, right? So um, if you can't write the check right now, you could still probably get a hit to help win the game, right? You could still put yourself you can still put yourself out in the community and, you know, volunteer your time at a big brother's big sisters. Um, you know, you can still go to, you know, one of the, uh, one of the, the special needs, uh, uh, places. We have a place around here. It's a business called, you know, Cades and, you know, they, 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 they bring in, um, some special needs students that, uh, you know, spend the day at, uh, you know, Sunday at a job site, you know, to figure out what they can do, you know, going on with, uh, with their life, you know, if they want to, you know, change oil or, you know, work here at the dealership or whatnot. So, you know, I put my time out there too, for some of these, some of these organizations. And I've done that before I, you know, I've ever written a check, but you have to find what is your purpose, right? Just because, yeah. you know, helping the community and writing, you know, and writing a check, you know what I mean? And showing up and, and putting all this time and effort in is what, you know, my purpose is right now. That doesn't mean that everybody has to be Frank Crenetti to, to, to be able to be successful and be out in the community. But if you're doing charity work, to worry about getting business like that's like going to your cousin's wedding with a stack of business cards <laughs> just to try to sell cars yeah you know, you're, you're, you're totally missing the point here right you're going to your cousin's wedding to meet her family right you're going to your cousin's <laughs> wedding to enjoy yourself you're going to your cousin's wedding to celebrate you know the sacrament of marriage with right. him and then, you know, as a byproduct of it, yes, people want to talk about cars and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe you do end up selling a couple of cars. But if you go to the, the if I right. went to a wedding with you, then, oh, hey, I'm going to go sell five cars. Right. Hey, you're, you're doing it wrong, right? That's, that, not, that's, that's not what, what it, that's not what it is, right? That's and some where, people say, well, oh, oh man. Slimy came from. What is it? <laughs> I said, that's where the term slimy salesman came from. Right, right, right. So, you know, so people see, you know, they see your face on Facebook, they see you doing charity and it's like, oh man, it must be doing great for your business. I mean, great. My business is already doing phenomenal, right? Do I want to grow my business? Yes. Does it give you more exposure? You know, when you do something big, absolutely. But that can't be why you're doing it or it's yeah. going to backfire on you. It really is. Like if you're, if your intentions aren't pure, um, then just don't do it, right? If you don't care about, you know, the American Heart Association, or you don't care about, you know, pediatric cancer for children, um, if you don't care about really, you know, um, raising funds for whatever you're doing or showing up at the event, it's going to come off that way. You know what I mean? So you really need to find something that 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 fuels your passion, that that is your purpose, you know, or it's 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 going to come. People are going to see through it. You know what I mean? And and that's the only way I do things is if they actually feel good. If I'm doing something and I don't, I, I, I'm not into it, I'm just going to tell somebody, listen, you know, I, I, I'm, it's not my thing. You know, people approach me all the time. Hey, can you support this? Can you support that? And, you know, it's just like, eh, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's not my thing. It's not what, it's not what fuels me. I know that's your passion and I appreciate it and I'll listen. You know, I'll, I'll try to get excited about it, but yeah. if it doesn't excite me, um, I'm probably not going to do it, you know? So right now, community, um, local, um, everything we're trying to do that excites me. You know, these events excite me. I'm having fun with it. So, um, yeah. but don't, don't do it to go to your cousin's wedding to sell cars, do it because you care about your cousin, you love your cousin, you know, and then as a byproduct, the karma, you know, if it four times your business, like it did Ray, I'm sure he doesn't do charity because he needs or wants more money. He does charity because he knows that giving back is the right thing to do and it feels good. Right. Yeah. And then the, 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 that law of karma, you know, comes back to you. And even if it doesn't right now, you know, eventually, like we talk about, you know, you could pray to God all day and ask him what you want. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get it. Right. So right. just because you ask for it doesn't mean that that's, you know, the right thing that's actually going to happen. You know, sometimes things happen for reasons we have no idea why, but, you know, hopefully down the road, we'll figure it out.
that's 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 true dude i i believe that it always happens for for you not to you so mm -hmm. so um the the charity thing giving back even if you can't go to a delco level yet right or you can't do a you know a global movement like ray higdon has done where you're you're you know you, right. you have thousands of people all over but, all but, over you, the world. but, you, but you can by Start coming somewhere. to like by, by coming to by coming to our events and yeah. you know by by bringing friends by sharing it out on social media yeah. um by by donating you know ten dollars for a chance that we're selling for you know for whatever it is you are you don't have to be the person that says, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna form this charity." You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a big step for, it's a big step. It's a yeah. lot, of, it's a lot of stuff. Accounting, uh, you know, responsibilities. I mean, you don't have to be the person. You just got to support something that you have a passion for, right? right? So we right. have a passion for giving back to the people that support us, and the people that support us are the local community. So um, that yeah. that's what we're doing. That's what our mission is. And I, I, again, you can study Oprah, you can study all the greats. They all do charity stuff. And that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. the secret to success in a lot of their opinions. So, mm -hmm. so, um, so we know that you've got the Delco group. We know that you're doing, you know, over a hundred cars a month, which is, is an anomaly in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the car business. Um, what do you think the number, I mean, again, you say, you know, you talk about building this community and, and building, but like if, if there's a guy out there selling cars or selling insurance right now, and they're, they're not, they're not hitting, you know, maybe they're, they're making a hundred grand a year and they help a handful of people, but they really want to get to the next level. What would be the first thing you would tell that person that's maybe selling 15 cars a month and can't figure out how to bust through to, to start making moves to get to your level? Because I know you weren't at 100, you haven't been at 100 cars a month since you started in the business. I mean, you started. First day I sold a car, 100 cars a month the next month. It was crazy. <laughs> It was crazy, right? J j just like these workout programs that that we're on, right? It was the oh, first yeah, day I took, the, I, took this, the, I took this magic pill, <laughs> right? And all of a sudden, I lost you know twenty five pounds, and you know went to the walked into the gym. I lifted one weight, yeah. and boom, you're in shape. It's crazy, right? So right. Yeah. it's a combination of things. You have to change. You know what I mean? You have to you have to work on what's getting you success first of all, right? And then. You got to be able to, to 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 listen and 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 grow your business and listen to the people that are actually doing it. There's so many gurus, you know, out there, and uh, you know that are just regurgitating all this information um, that's been out there for years and years. And then you know they're googling, um, you know, how to sell cars, you know, on Facebook or you know whatever it is, and then they're teaching it. So they're a teacher, you know what I mean? They're teaching general knowledge. Uh, they're learning general knowledge from a book, from YouTube, from uh, wherever they're 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 getting this knowledge from. And then because they're good talkers, or they can stand on stage, or uh, you know they they have a they have a a client base of dealerships that they've been dealing with for you know a decade or so, um, that they could sell this information you know back to a dealership or back to a salesperson. To me, you know, I was never a big school guy. You know what I mean? Because you know if my if my accounting teacher really understood accounting, he wouldn't be making um, fifty thousand dollars a year, right? He'd be applying what he was trying to teach me in economics, you know what I mean, into the marketplace and making, you know, with two commas in the in the paycheck rather than just one comma, you know, in his paycheck. So, um, to me, if if I'm trying to learn something, I go find the most successful person that I can find that's doing it in that industry, and I'm going to listen. Um, and try to understand everything that they're doing. I'm going to ask as many questions as possible. I'm going to pay for that knowledge um, for somebody that's actually doing it because they have specific knowledge and they've done it. It's crazy, right? Yep. You pay somebody to learn something and they've actually done it rather than pay somebody that um, hasn't done it because you haven't sold cars the next number of years. I'm not saying you can't learn anything from a coach, um, but to me, at my level, I want to learn things from people that are actually doing it, you know? or, you know, what their, what their methodology is, you know, of how they got there um, to actually do it. So there's so many things you can do 
uh, to scale your business right away. One of the biggest things is uh, to keep um, to keep working your referral base and to not worry about the dealership bringing new business in, right? Because right. if you're worried about the dealership bringing your business in, then you're competing with not only every other salespeople, uh, salesperson that's on your floor, you're competing with every other dealership uh, in the area, right? So somebody walks into a dealership, you know, around here and they say, you know, well, I'm going to go over and talk to, uh, talk to Frank down the street. They're like, all right, we're done. They know I'm going to sell them a car. They know I'm going to help them out because I do things the right way. So rather than that dealership trying to figure out what the heck Frank's doing. Right. And you know, how, how do, how do we change our processes um, to figure out how he scaled his business from, you know, 18 cars the first month to absolute domination in the industry right now and doing it the right way every single day, every single client, um, every single time. They just go back to their processes and say, eh, we'll pretend like, you know, the 600 pound grill is not in the room. So right. it works out better. It works out better for me, you know, more, more power to me. It works out. It works out better. I mean, you would bury your head in the sand and not try to figure it out. Um, that, that, that drives me business. And, and, you know, your, your salesperson is actually referring them down to me because he wants to, he wants a hundred dollar referral check and he knows I'm going to sell them a car. So I got local salespeople from almost every dealership in the area that when somebody says they're going to see, you know, a different car, Oh, you might want to go see Frank, you know, down the street. So, you know, I, I poach, I poach from every dealership in the area too. So not only are you helping me sell cars by your bad process, um, I've infiltrated all your salespeople, uh, also in the area and they're sending me customers. So thanks for not switching your process up. You're helping me out immensely. It's great. Works out phenomenal. Dude, that is hilarious. So <laughs> hey, our buddy Joe Skelly's on, by the way. Hey, hey, what's up, buddy? He's a good dude. Mm-hmm. So um so you have uh, and and I, I've heard you I've heard you say before that and I like I was there. I saw it. Like I saw you. You like we were trying to do some stuff. You and I are doing doing some some stuff together. And 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 I'm sitting there going, "This is freaking ridiculous." There were seven or eight people like there, and you're literally working every single one of those at the same exact time. And you right, were doing it yeah, effortlessly. But, yeah, but, but they're not. Yeah, because they're not in the same part in the process, right? So. You know, all these car, you know, experts and, you know, there's no way that, you know, all these, all these guys that sell and these girls that sell, you know, 12 or 15 or 20 cars a month. And they're like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. There's no way you can deal with more than two people at the same time. Well, that's because you're doing it wrong. Right. So, um, A, I'm working out most of the information before anybody who comes in. Right. Crazy that you'll give people information before they actually come into a store to purchase something. Right. Right. Um, But B, not everybody's in the right, in the same uh, part of the process, you know, I've said this a billion times, but it's just like if you go to a nice restaurant, you know, I go to Sullivan's or, you know, go to a restaurant downtown and it's a busy Friday night or a busy Saturday night, seven o'clock, seven thirty, when everybody wants a reservation, you know, there, there, there's not enough servers to have just one server for every table. You know, there's a team, there's bus boys, stuff like that, but that server may have four or five tables. Every table's not at the same um, point in their meal. Uh, you know, some people are just getting seated or getting their wine list. Some people are on their appetizer. Some people are getting the, you know, the warm bread with the, you know, with the dippy oil sauce that I can't eat with this 75 hard program that you got me on killing me. Um, you know, some people are on their, their, their main course, right? They're getting their, their filet mignon. They're, they, you know, they're, they're on their dessert. So, you know, you're able as a great waiter or waitress to be able to touch base with everybody at the key points of their meal, you know, where they're at in the process, keep them, you know, keep them, uh, keep them excited about being at the restaurant, you know, keep them moving through the process of, of, uh, of the progression of, of the meal. Same thing we're doing here. We're moving you through the process of progression, you know, of, of the car sale. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be a rigid process. Like a lot of dealerships have that they force, um, these processes on people. Hey, you have to come in first to get a number. Hey, you got to be here to get your your car appraised. Well, guess what? If I don't know what a four year old Honda Accord LX with forty thousand miles on it's worth at this point, then I, I shouldn't be in the car business, right? So if I can't come up with a general number and figure out some 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 pretty basic math uh, for somebody to figure out what their payments are going to be and give them all the information up front, because guess what? When you give somebody all the information up front, they're going to talk about it one way or the other. Either going to come in and get the information and most likely leave your dealership, go home or talk about it. I'd rather flip the script. Here's all the information, talk about it, then come in, 
This way we can make an educated decision why you're here and you already have all your questions and you'll already be through the, you know, this is my payment stage rather than, you know, flip it and have them here and have to put pressure on them to do it the wrong way. Um, well, I don't even worry about, you know, customer service scores anymore. You know, back in the day, I always worry about what's my CSI? You know, what's what's the customer satisfaction? I don't even have to ask anybody anymore. I'll log on. I'm at 99% right now. I don't tell people, hey, you got to give me tens on the survey or whatnot. I don't even have to say that anymore. When, when, when you give world-class customer service and people aren't used to getting that at any other place where they do know you and they are used to it, so they know what they're right. going to get. Right. It's mind blowing. Like at the end of every sale, I ask everybody, did I do a great job for you? And most people say, man, I can't even believe that I bought a car. This was freaking amazing. Dude, I can't I would... get a pizza. I can't get a pizza up at Coco's on Friday night <laughs> as fast as I just drove out in this car. And I can't believe how easy you made the process. Boom. I was going to bring that up. That's where, that's where it's at. I was That's going to I bring was. that up. That was one of the things I was like, is, is you do ask that of every single customer, every, every one customer. of them. I saw every it. single customer. It's insane. And, and I, I mean, look, I also saw something else that blew my mind because again, I'm not in the car business and I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to sell. I mean, I could probably yeah. figure it out, but I've never sold cars. But one of the things that I noticed was, you know, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, well, we have this process. So when the customer comes in, even if you talk to them on the phone, man, you don't sell them a car without making sure they drive it first. Like you got to make sure. So I'm sitting there and I'm watching all of this and I'm just going to tell a quick story. I'm watching you do all this stuff and you're texting people like mainly texting. It's rare that you're even talking on the phone. You're texting people. And this woman shows up and you go, and I'm watching this and you go, She's like, oh, well, here's the keys to my current car. And you're like, yeah, we got your new one. It's ready. It's out here and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and Damien is ready for you in the finance office. Let's, and she was in and out in like 15, I mean, it was like 15, 20 minutes. <clears throat> and I said to you, dude, what, what was that all about? She goes, oh, she knew what she wanted. She had already test driven her new car on the internet before she came in. And I go, Mm -hmm. So she just literally came in, gave you the keys to her old car and walked out and, and got into her new one. And you're like, yeah, dude, you got to eliminate the barrier. She, listen, she, she's been buying a Honda. She's been buying. I know. I remember the customer. She's been buying you know a Honda Accord LX for uh, Mary Catherine for like, this is like her seventh one. Right. So we complicate this process by trying to go through all these steps. Just yeah. ask the customer, have you made a decision on the car that you wanted to purchase? Crazy. Right. Have you made a decision on the car that you want to purchase? Right. Yeah. I want another Honda Accord LX white, please. Great. I'll have it all ready for you. Right. What, what, what is the, you know, what, what is it that, uh, that, that we have to, you know, put it, listen, isn't it more expensive product than most things? Yes. But when I was logging on to Apple, right. I can, there's different ways I can buy things at Apple. I just wanted a pair of AirPods, AirPods wireless charger. Right. It yeah. didn't sit there and ask me, a 12 step process of questions to come up with the conclusion of why I wanted to buy a pair of AirPods. Right. Right. I just clicked on, I clicked on AirPods. I clicked it on. It's, it gave me options. Do I want to come to the store and pick it up? Do I want it? Uh, do I want it delivered by Amazon? Do I want Apple to deliver it? It just gave me three options. Right. So right. I do the same thing. Do, do you want the short delivery? You want me to go through every step and process with you? I absolutely will. It's not a problem. You know what I mean? If that's what you need and that's what you want, and you want me to start from from you know point A and walk you all the way through point Z, we can do that. Do you want an at home delivery? Um, you know, if you're too busy, you know, is is now a good time to bring the car over to you, or 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 when you're when you're home? I know you're at work right now. Do you get a lunch break and bring the car over to you and have everything ready? I got guy out right now, um, bringing three three car. Uh, a three car deal uh, up to get signed the paperwork at King of Russia right now. You know, it's like 45 minutes away rather than have that business owner come down here, yeah. inconvenience his day. This is the first step in our relationship. I told him I want to blow it out the box. I got all the information up front. No reason for that guy to have to leave his business. It's his own business to come down here to take, you know, X number of hours to fight traffic. When we have guys that I can just take the paperwork to them, they can sign everything, come back down. The cars were delivered to them already. Boom. It's done. It's easy. It should be that easy, right? But we force this process. Oh, you want to buy three cars? Let me make it real difficult for you. Hold on. Let's see how this is going to work out. <laughs> it's not. 
It's not. They're going to get to me, and then they're going to expect every service in their life to be like me, just like I went to Disney. And the level of service at Disney, like you buy something, no problem, sir, it'll be in you. Would you like it back at your hotel room or would you like it to ship it to your house? You don't have to carry it around Disney your, your whole life. Well, you know what? Just just ship it to my house. I don't want to yeah. carry this around, right? Um, there's not a drop of trash anywhere in Disney, right? You don't see a no. drop of trash, trash can. You don't see anybody moving around. Like these are all things that like, I'm like, man, why don't every business just mirror themselves after Disney, the customer service, you yeah. know, that Disney has my speed pass. Boom. I didn't wait in line for anything. Like people, like the one thing I was like, oh man, I don't wait in line for all this, you know, all these rides and stuff like that. Maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. There was a billion people at the park. It was yeah. the greatest thing yeah. I ever did. That, that fast pass is cool. So, you know, one yeah. of the things that I, you I have a fast pass, you want a fast pass, come on in. I'll sell you a car. <laughs> right. Fast, You'll fast. be in and out, in and out. And yep. that's one of the biggest, I think for me, like one of the, the worst parts about buying a car is why, why do I have to go spend three, four, two, one and a half hours at a dealership to buy well, listen, a car? Listen, well, sometimes there, there's issues, right? So not every deal is, is, Right, I get that. Not, not every deal is is that way. Okay, so you I know, twenty percent. There's there's credit issues that we have to work yeah, through, yeah, yeah. and and a lot of times, a lot of times from now with the relationships I have with all my clients, that they'll, they're just going to be right up front with me, right? So we're going to send them an application online. They're going to fill it out rather than have them sit at the dealership and you know us try to us try to you know get it to work real quick. We're going to actually work the deal and, and 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 make sure that we're doing right by the customer rather than doing it quick. And then, you know, once we have the approval, we'll bring in all the stipulation stuff. Um, sometimes, you know, customer comes in, they'll have insurance issues or, you know, it's not always, yes, I want the Honda Accord, right? And sometimes we need to figure out, you know, through, uh, you know, deductive reasoning or, or, you know, rather, you know, addition by subtraction, figure out what's not going to work, you know, for the customer to actually figure out, you know, what is going to work. Remember, these are the people that employ you, not the person whose name's on the sign. You're working for them, right? So if, if you're not willing to change your process, you know, uh, for what they want to do, you're going to go out of business, right? It'd be like, you know, uh, I mean, you know, what was it like, you know, back in the day, you, you know, you'd, you'd go to a business, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you, you go to the, you go to the, uh, the butcher shop, right? And you got to take a, you got to take a number, right? So, okay, I'm number 24. There's legitimately, you know, 12 people waiting in front of me and I just want to get lunch meat cut. I don't even go into the supermarket anymore, right? I go into, uh, I go into the Wegmans app and I put in what I want, yeah, uh, Instacart, and it gets delivered to my house, yep. right? So sometimes do I like going to the supermarket? Absolutely. But there was a process that the supermarket figured out that wasn't working, right? So what wasn't working is people standing there with their little ticker tape, you know, waiting in line for somebody to slice their lunch meat thin. You yep. know what I mean? The guy in front of me wants to taste every piece of freaking lunch meat. Like, dude, it's the same imported ham that you've been getting for years. Stop trying to get your free slice of imported ham and American cheese, New York or American cheese, and get out of my way because I want to get my lunch meat and get the heck out of here. I don't have to do that anymore, right? I just go on Instacart, boom, yeah, slice it, boom. Boom, and it gets delivered to my house, right? Yeah. So if you're not willing to change the processes like Uber has, like Netflix has, you can watch yep. every show that you want, you know, right, right in a row, you're gonna die. You're gonna die as a salesperson, you're gonna die as an organization. I'm talking to some dealerships right now, some salespeople around the country. They don't present lease numbers, they don't present numbers to every customer that walks in the door. How do I know if anybody wants to buy anything if I don't get a number, right? Right. So everybody gets numbers here. Everybody. You know, you come in, you're the UPS guy and you stop in my showroom and you're taking a glimpse of the CRV in the middle of the showroom, boom, numbers. I'm just going to hand you numbers every single time. Yeah. You'd be amazed how many people that'll, that'll actually come back or actually buy a car when they realize that you're going to be upfront with them, you're going to be transparent with them, and that you're going to give them information that nobody else is going to give them. Bru so. Dude, you you said something to me, and I I want to I want to make sure I get this in. We're we've only we've already been on here fifty four minutes. That's crazy. Um, but the and I know yeah, you probably long, long crazy or short crazy. I don't I don't know. No, I bet it. We, it seems like we've been on five minutes. But the oh. you know I want to get this in. Like you said something, and you said, um, it's not. It's not my selling process. Mm -hmm. I'll let you finish that. 
Well, I, I tell everybody, you know, this is um, it's not my selling process. It's 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 your buying process. So, you know, however you want it to go, that's how we're going to do it. Right. So rather than me force my process on you, my job is to be here at the dealership. You know, most people come in and even I have defenses up when I go to buy something. I was out trying to buy a TV, and, you know, like somebody came over and they said, can I help you? I knew what the heck I wanted. Right. But I said, no, I'm just looking, right? Because that person didn't really make me feel comfortable. You know what I mean? He walked over and he was kind of like, he wasn't professional in the way that he approached me. So somebody comes in and they say, there's looking, you know, I mean, that's great. You know, uh, it's totally okay to, to, to just look, you know what I mean? Most people don't put their shoes on, you know, to say, hey, honey, let's go out and buy a car today. You know, some people do, but not everybody does. My job here at the dealership is to be 100% transparent with you through the whole process, right? You don't do this every day. I do, you know, so we're not going to try to just force this, uh, you know, this sales process on you. This right. is your process. You tell me how you want it to go. So if you want your trade appraised first, you have a certain car that you've already decided, you know, might be right for your family. Let me know. I'll pull it up. We'll go through it. Um, that's the way you need to treat, you know, you need to treat everything, you know, this way that at the end of that, you know, spiel that you tell everybody, which is yeah. really the way that it should be. And the end of you went through everything, then we can make an educated decision together. You know, if this is the place that you want to do business, if you trust me enough that I went through everything and I gave you all the information, you feel comfortable that you came in here, you know, and we found the right vehicle that fits your needs, your budget, your, your family's needs, right? Because a lot of times people say, yeah, I did pick out the car. And then, yeah. you know, you pull it up and you go through a little bit of a needs analysis with them. And it's really not what's best for them. So rather than trying to shove them in the car that they think that they want, you know, I'll actually show them what I think they should buy. And I'll tell everybody, you can purchase whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to give you my opinion on everything. So there's certain cars that I don't like to sell some used cars, right? There's some certain manufacturers and certain cars that I know aren't always the best cars and have the best reputation. So, you know, I say, listen, I know you came out of the car and more than happy to purchase the vehicle. Um, but I'm going to give you the information that I have and, you know, tell you my opinion on everything because I am a sales professional. Uh, I'm not just, you know, uh, uh, an order taker. You know, right. People say, well, you must be an order taker. No, I'm definitely not an order taker. If you're an order taker, you can't close at the percentages um, that I close at because the first, you know, rebuttal or the first speed bump, if you're an order taker, then you can't get over that hurdle, right? So you'll never be able to get in front of enough people um, to be able to scale your business. And that's where most of the 12, the nine, the 10, the 12, the 15, you know, even 20, you know, a month salespeople are stuck at because they're order takers. They don't realize it, but they can't actually get over that, that customer's first speed bump, that customer's first defense of, I'm just looking, or um, no, or, you know, um, whatever the, the rebuttal be, I need to talk to my spouse. Uh, I need to, you know, I need to think on it. I need to pray on it. These are all things that, you know, you're actually listening um, to what the customer's uh, saying rather than understanding what they're trying to tell you. Okay. So right. to me, I always, I don't listen to what people say to me and don't take that disrespectful. You know what I mean? I just, I understand what you're trying to tell me and I can reason through, you know, um, either deductively or, uh, you know, help you try to make an educated decision because I've been through so many scenarios. Um, there's not many people that have been in front of as many um, deals as I have, you know what I mean? As many people yeah. as I have um, in the industry in almost any industry, I don't care what it is, insurance, real estate, car sales. Um, so, you know, what I, what I teach in, in my classes is, is, is the psychiatry of it, the psychology of it, the mindset of the sale, um, and not just from our perspective, where the client's at, where the customer's at, because all these all these things that people say to you, it's not really what they mean. It's just their defense mechanism. It's what we say. I even do it when I go out to buy something. Sometimes I don't want to be sold the TV that I already picked out that I know I want and I want to be out of here. But somebody came up into me and threw me off my game. They said, you know, you know, how can I help you? Or do you know what you're looking for? And I was like, no, because that person didn't make me feel comfortable. Right now I'm just yeah. looking. I'm not looking. I want that freaking TV on the wall and I want it in my house and I want it today and I want it set up. That's right. what I want, right? I want that car. I want it today. I want the payment to be, you know, where I can afford it. So that's stop listening to what people are saying. Try to understand what they're trying to tell you. So if somebody wanted to get into your your um, training group, what's the what's the web address? I'll throw it up on the screen. Uh, Frankselite.com. 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 So, so 
I'm going to throw that up right now on the screen. So anybody that wants to wants to join your training, they can they can get in there. So so let's talk about the um, recently. You and I. Well, I I started before you, and then I I finally I think convinced you to give it a go. Um, the 75 hard challenge. Now you're, you're, changed, you're, you're changed a my dude. life. Everybody's like, Oh, Frank sells over a hundred cars a month has the charity group has all these rental properties and real estate stuff you're doing. Dude is busier than anybody. I know how in the world would he ever fit in something like 75 hard? What's it done for you and how are you getting it all in? How, how do you do it? Um, I don't waste. So, since March, since we uh, since we got back from uh, from uh, GrowthCon, um, yeah. kind of changed my changed my mindset a lot, you know. And it wasn't you know this overwhelming. I had to be this overwhelming sales guy. It, it was actually more a self reflection on what I was doing every day in my life, rather than yeah. making excuses. Um, my 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 number one excuse was I don't have enough time. And really, what that meant is I, I didn't care enough to do it or I didn't think it was important to me. So my excuse would always be, I didn't have enough time. So when I sat down and analyzed that I, I spent anywhere from 22 to 27 hours um, watching TV or Netflix um, a, a week, um, just taking that out, I haven't watched a TV program that I haven't specifically wanted to watch, right? I just don't turn on the TV anymore and just flick through and try to find um, something that, that, uh, that I wanna watch. You know right. what I mean? So if there's a, a certain program that I want to watch, I'll set some time aside for an hour, two hours, whatever it is for a football game or something. Um, I took TV out of my out of my my daily routine. Um, I get up a lot earlier than I than I ever have. I'm up anywhere between five thirty and six o'clock. Um, I started the seventy five hard. I dropped twenty five pounds. I'm in the best shape uh, physically and mentally probably of my life right now, and uh, I owe it to just changing my habits. Right, so. Um, you can't change anything unless you, you change it and you really change it. Right. So um, you telling yourself you don't have enough time is BS. People call me all the time. Like, listen, I know you're super busy. I'm like, no, I, I can talk, man. It's okay. No big deal. Let's have a conversation. You know, yeah. um, once you learn how to manage your time efficiently, it's, it's not, it's not too much time. It, it really not. And I, 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 you know, to, to your point and, and I'll say it like, Dude, I think every time I've ever called you, except for maybe once or twice, you answered the phone. Like, and it's and and you'll have people stacked up in in the showroom, or you're you know busy doing something, but you answer the phone, and that's incredible. Plus, you put your cell phone number out for the entire world to call you. Listen, this is a popularity contest. Let's not get it confused, okay? Life right now. And, and always is a popularity contest. So just let's just take it back to when we were in high school, right? So where did you want to sit at lunch? You wanted to sit with the cool kids, right? You wanted to sit with the most popular person um, in in the high school, or, or, or you know, you wanted to try to hang out with them most of the time. That's yeah. what it's all about, right? So if or you want to scale, it's, it's, <laughs> right? Like it's it's listen. If nobody knows who you are. <laughs> nobody's going to know who you are. So, you know, I have salespeople right. all around the country and they friend me and I click on their page and it's like, Hey, it doesn't tell me what you do. Um, you know, it doesn't show me who you are. It's got a picture on there of your dog. Like yeah. I, I, I like dogs, but I, I don't, I, I don't need to figure out if I know you, you got a picture of your dog on there. You're not doing anything inventive. You're not, you don't live in my area. You're nobody can refer me a customer. Like why would I accept your friend request? If you're not doing anything that, that I want to learn from, right? Like just to have another friend, no, you want to you want to go out in the community and friend people on Facebook just like it's real life, right? Social yep. media means you need to be social. You know, somebody likes one of your posts, you go in and comment on it. Yep. You know, the next stage is start commenting. You go and you can instant message somebody. Hey, you know, um, know your friend uh, Claire was just here, purchased the car. Just wanted to reach out, let you know. You know, I would treat you with the same respect. If you have any questions, you know, or you need any more referrals, looks like I sold like fifteen of our mutual friends' cars. Just let me know. Here's my contact information. You know, what I mean, like Ray Higgins says, you know, just reach out to somebody, ask them if they're interested in your product or your service. That's yep. it. It doesn't have to be a hard sell. Hey, if you're ever interested in buying a car or anything in the automotive business or anything else that I'm doing or charity work, if you're interested in my product or my service, here's my direct number. If somebody says no, 
okay, cool. But most times some people say just thank you. And then you're in the back of their head. Then you're friends with them, right? Yeah. So it's a popularity contest. You don't get to be popular just by sitting in the corner eating your lunch by yourself, right? You get to be popular by going out and getting involved in the sporting events in high school. You know, you get to be popular by joining clubs, you get to be popular by, you know, doing things in the community, doing things in your high school. Um, it's the same thing. It's just, you know, you're just older now. So just, yeah, just do it. That's just right. It. That's right. Well, dude, we're at um, an hour and five minutes and you and I could talk all day like we, mm -hmm. we do. We, we, we get into long winded conversations, but I think that, you know, you've shared a lot of, a lot of gold, man. Anybody in sales, anybody with a business, anybody that, that, wants to take their life to the next level needs to probably go back and rewatch this, listen to some of the stuff you've talked about because like, you know, dude, you've, I know you don't have it all figured out, but you're killing it, man. You're killing it. Well, you know, don't, don't think that right. Because I, I don't think that way. I come in like yeah. Rocky one every single day. So when you start reading your own press clippings every day, yeah. you need to get punched in the face and yeah. you need to take a step back and figure out what got you um, to that success. Right. So um, the, 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 as soon as I start smelling myself or as soon as I start reading my own press clippings, it, it, it will inevitably punch you in the face and floor you. Yep. Okay. And then you got to figure out, you know, how you react to that. Right. You know, it's not how hard you get hit. You know, you got to, you got to get, it's, it's, it's how fast you get back up. So got to get back up and you got to get right back in the hunt and do what's successful that got you there. That's why I say the word is persistence. You know, I am annoyingly persistent in everything that I do. If yep. you're not going to give me the answer that I want, I'm going to go to somebody else. I never take no from somebody that can't tell me yes in the first place. So if you're not the decision maker, if you're not the person that's going to get me, you know, to where I want to go, then I don't need you. I'm not going to be disrespectful to you. You know what I mean? But I don't need you, you know, right. to tell me no. And you're, you're not the person that could tell me yes anyway. So you're just telling me no, just to try to get that person that can tell me yes, not to be able to make a decision. So I'm going <laughs> to get to that person one way or the other. Right. So we can shortcut it. Right. Or, or, or we can do the long route. Either way, I'm going to win one right. way or the other. Why? because I'm annoyingly persistent with it. And right. I will out persistence your no to get my yes, right? So that's that's where the gold's at, persistence in everything in life. And then not believing that you're doing great. I don't need any more people in my life patting me on the back, telling me great job, okay? That's not what I need. I need somebody telling me where I'm screwing up, um, what I'm doing, how I can change what I'm doing to, to be more efficient every day, to grow as a person, to grow in my business, to grow in my community. That's what I need. Yeah. That's what people need. Not this, you know, this self-conscious of, of uh, you know, that everybody needs, you know, glorification of what they're doing. Um, that's not going to get you anywhere. That's momentary, uh, you know, euphoria that's going to wear off real quick, right? So you need real. I need more real people uh, in my life. The real deal, Ken Walls has broken down to me many times. And, uh, you know, we've grown our friendship, especially in the last couple months uh, yeah. with each other. And, you know, I, I appreciate you, man. You know, I, I don't, like I said, I don't need any more out of boys um, in my life. I need people telling me what I'm doing, you know, and how I can change things to be a better person, you know, to be a better salesperson, to be a better everything in life. Because if you're not growing, you're dying, right? You're either growing or dying. Right. When the tree stops growing, it dies. Right? right. It's not reaching for the sun anymore. The leaves aren't blooming. So you need to keep growing. And uh, that's it. That's all I got today. Dude, you're awesome, brother. I love you. You're you're one of my best friends. Day 61, baby. Woo! I know, man. I'm on 68. It's unreal. 62, I'm sorry. Day 62. Woo. Hey, and everybody needs to go join our group. We're all in mm. there. 75 hard with Ken Walls. Look it up on Facebook. Yep and jump in there because we're we hold each other accountable in there oh, it's crazy and my dad just joined i can't believe it my dad i know like, man what are you doing you look like you're from high school again i'm like man i feel like i'm better in high school it's crazy <laughs> I, i've never been in a medium shirt in my life i've never i've never had a, a, a pant like under 30 i'm in like 31s or something right now. i don't even know what the heck they are but um, not even the physical, just, just, just the mental is, um, the, the, you know, what you go through every day. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's, it's, it's absolutely changed my life. It's changed my mindset. I, I'm a different person than I was, um, 60 days ago. It's, 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 it's amazing. It's absolutely it, amazing. It, it really is, dude. It's insane, man.
Like it's, it's crazy. But, but anyway, we'll do. Thank you. I appreciate you coming on. Everybody watching, make sure that you look. If you want some advanced training, ninja sales training, Frank's got a got a got a group put together. Go get on frankselite.com. Listen, fo follow us. Follow us, the Delco Group, please. Yeah. Even more importantly to me, it's not about. Uh, yeah. My personal success anymore. It's about putting everything I have into our charity and into our community. So, um, yeah. if you want to, you know, join us and see, you know, how we're helping local and where your money's going every single second or whatever you can do, you know, to help us out, your, you know, your product or your service or your time, um, join us. Uh, the Delco Group. Just go on and friend my uh, friend our charity. Um, that, that's how you can help us out the most. Awesome, brother. Well, hang hang on. We'll we'll end the live stream now. Thank thank you to everyone. Man, dude, listen, just so you know, I think we got like 15 or 20 different people that shared this out. I, I, I think we should have had 50 or 60 that shared it out, but I know at least 15 or 20 did. So that's that's pretty awesome. Thank you all for sharing this. Thanks for everybody that watched. The hearts, the likes, the love. Have a great day. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, everybody.